I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening all over this land, I'd hammer out danger. and the sisters all over this land well, if I had a bell I'd ring it in the morning I'd ring it in the evening all over this land I'd ring out I'd ring out warning I'd ring out love Between the brothers and the sisters All over this land Good morning I'm Judy Gaudet. I'm the events coordinator here at Unity Church of El Cajon. And today, we're filling in for Pastor Robert, who was away for the day. And we just want to welcome you. We bring you love from all of us to all of you. And thank you for joining us today. Our service today will experience Matiana and Olga Ferguson offering the Daily Word, Reverend Ann Dunigan delivering the meditation, and Linda Burdett as our guest speaker. Offering the opening prayer is Becky Rokel. Thank you, Judy. Please join me in prayer. We say thank you, God. We're grateful for this time together for the way that we can connect. We send our love and energy and healing light and these words out into the community, to the world. Help us to send these messages far beyond the walls of El Cajon and California and all around the world, connecting with people in that need to hear these words people that want to hear these words, and those who just share these words with us. We thank you for connecting us in your divine mind. Amen. Well, I've got a hammer, and I've got a bell, and I've got a song to sing all over this land it's a hammer of justice it's a bell of freedom it's a song about love between the brothers and the sisters all over this land it's the hammer of justice the bell of freedom it's a song about love between brothers and the sisters love between my brothers and sisters love between all brothers and sisters oh over oh, this land Olga Ferguson, and this is my daughter, Matiana Ferguson, and we will be presenting the Daily Word today. The affirmation is divine order. Divine order is always unfolding in my life and in the world. As spring ripens into summer each year, new leaves transform bare trees into canopies of green. Tiny seedless grow into sturdy plants and decorate the landscape with an array of colorful blossoms. 
I marvel at the divine order demonstrated as the earth renews itself. I recognize that even as the earth appeared barren in the wintertime, new life was preparing to spring forth. I notice this pattern in my own life. I may be demonstrating visible growth in my life, like the earth in the winter. It may seem that my life is stagnant and barren. I remember that as the seasons of nature change, so do the seasons of my life. Even when it is not apparent to me, I know that divine order is always unfolding in my life and in the world. From Mark, the earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. Thank you. Good morning. Please come with me into meditation today. Let's close our eyes and go to the very center of our being where we know God lives. Taking a deep breath, we relax into the peace and the silence of God. Mother, Father, God, as we raise our consciousness into the light of understanding, we know that sometimes there is no explanation. There is just the knowledge that it is not for us to understand. But Lord, you have graciously given us the knowledge to know that the power of love heals everything. And as we take our love, which is divinely given, and release it to every soul in this universe, we know that it will bring the great healing needed bringing to all of us an abundance of health, prosperity, happiness, joy, and above all, peace. And we sit quietly a moment with that peace in our heart. A peace that passes all understanding. God, we wait upon your love, your peace, and your grace. And so it is. Amen. And now as you come back to that room, this room, where we have blessed it with the peace and the love of all understanding. Take that with you wherever you go today and know that you are God's beloved child. And so it is again. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dan. That was beautiful. Please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, we give thanks knowing that you are here right now in this moment. God, we know that in every now we find you here. When there are times when we are confused or unsure, we can always turn knowing that you are with us. 
and we are grateful. Thank you, God. Amen. So, here we are in the middle of June. Uh, Pastor Robert is fine. I am delighted to be your guest speaker today and give him a break. Um, just so you know, we have been videotaping, I think we're in our third month now, to bring services to you and for you and with you. And it's really different for us uh, doing it this way. Everyone involved misses you dearly and wishes that you were here. And we're so grateful that you watch us and that you find us online. We're grateful that you share us, that you like us, and we would love to have more comments on, on what we're doing. It's uh, been said that 2020 has been a little bit like waking up in the twilight zone. So much of what's happening has not happened before. And it kind of gives us an opportunity to um, look back into the past at the way things that have been handled. Of course, there's been health crises and there's been protests, but there hasn't been a time when we've been so connected, when it's been so real, when it's been in our living room and, and our kids are seeing it and touching it and we're, we're having to explain things that maybe there was a time we'd brush away and we don't always understand. What does this mean? What is the point? What is the purpose? As I think everybody watching this knows, I am in classes to become ordained in unity as a unity minister. And a part of my classes are um, kind of immersing myself in, in the Bible and Bible studies. I'm doing both a New Testament and an Old Testament class. And as I contemplate these new times as we go forward into a new world, I hope I know a better world, I found a story that really resonated with me and I'm excited to share it with you. So this story is in Numbers and we're reading the New International Version. Numbers 22, 16 through 20, if you want to read along with me. One fun thing about being on video, you can pause me, I don't mind, go get your Bible, and let's read through this together. They came to Balaam and said, this is what Balak, son of Zippor, says. Do not let anything keep you from coming to me, because I will reward you handsomely and do whatever you say. Come and put a curse on these people for me. Okay, so metaphysically, Balaam means or represents a level of sense consciousness that wants to evolve become better without developing spiritually. So it's kind of like a sense consciousness that would like to be in charge without surrendering or achieving God consciousness. And now I'll go back to the reading if you're reading with me. But Balaam answered them, even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. Now spend the night here so that I can find out what else the Lord will tell me. Balak, who's the emperor trying to coerce Balaam into coming and cursing the people that are making him mad in this story, metaphysically means the emptier, the waster or spoiler, the devastator or destroyer. And now we're at 2220. 
That night, God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the Moabite officials. But God was very angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and the two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off of the road into the field. Balaam beat it to get it back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood on a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right nor to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it laid down under Balaam, and he was angry, and he beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, what have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, because apparently he didn't think that was weird. You have made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey? Would you have always ridden to this very day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If I had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now. But I would have spared it. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing on the road to oppose me. Now if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with these men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with Balak's officials. That's kind of an interesting story, isn't it? A talking donkey, and then his master talks back to him. How do we respond when things happen that we aren't expecting to happen? Generally, we respond the very best we can. We also tend to respond from our true nature. And if we're aligned divinely, our true nature is our divine nature. But if we're in set, instead aligned with fear or aligned with sense consciousness, we respond with something completely different. So often we're in the midst of things that we don't understand, that we can't understand. So often we're only seeing the smallest part of the picture. We need to have faith in these times, perhaps more than any other time in our life. We need to know that there is more. There's something beyond what we're seeing right here and right now. There's more to this picture than what's in our awareness in this moment. And our awareness right now is flooded with images that we don't understand. But we have some control over that. We can turn off the news. We can step away from social media. We can turn into prayer. We can go back to meditation. 
How often have we been in a circumstance where our brand new car that works perfectly stalls out on us? We're trying to get somewhere, we really have to go, and the car just won't go, and the car just won't go. And then we find out a little while later that there was an accident that we would have been in, or, or something else befell whatever we would have been a part of had we actually gone that we couldn't go because the car stalls. In that moment, we may be cursing the car, but the reality is there's a bigger picture. There's more here. When we turn our awareness to God, when we go with faith, with knowing that there's more here, it makes a lot of the decisions we're making less urgent. If someone gets sick and we're praying for them and we want so much for them to get better and they don't, in spite of all the medicine, of all the doctors, of all the prayers, and they pass away, we need to have faith that there is a point or a purpose that we aren't seeing the whole picture. We need to know that our prayers are answered. There's a reason here. If you're confused right now, if you're unsure, trust God. Know that there is a reason. Trust that your prayers are being answered. You are not alone. We are right here with you, as close as the phone, as close as your heartbeat, as close as your next breath. God is here with you right now. There is a reason, and more will be revealed. Please join me in prayer. <clears throat> God, we give thanks. We give thanks that we can find you everywhere that we look. God, we give thanks that when we step outside, there's a hawk in the sky and we see you there. We give thanks that when we kiss our loved ones, we know that you are in that kiss, in that moment. We give thanks knowing that there is a divine presence in all things, and we will know the answers when we're ready. Thank you, God. Amen. What do you?
Thank you, Jody, for the beautiful music today. And thank you to all who participated to bring you this beautiful, beautiful service. We have several announcements to bring to your attention. If you need prayers, and most of us do during this time, please know that you can contact Silent Unity 365 days a year. Their number is 800-NOW-PRAY or 800 800- 669-7729, or you can contact our church office, leave your prayer request, and a chaplain will call you as soon as possible. We'd like to thank you for your continued support of this ministry. We appreciate your tithes and offerings. You can send them either to the church or you can use the website and press the donate button, which is safe and secure or call the office with your credit card number and we can process it for you. Again, thank you. If you would like to be receiving our newsletter, the daily blessings and the services online, and you're not doing so, please contact us and leave us your email address and we will see that you are connected to all these services. We have lots of Zoom programming and there's Sunday gathering at 10 a.m., the Wednesday chaplain's corner at 1 p.m., and a Thursday study group trusting the process at 4.30 p.m. If you would like to be part of the Zoom programming, again, contact the church. And now Jody will lead us in the peace song. on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God as creator family all are we let us walk with each other Perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every 
As we say the prayer of protection, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Have a beautiful day and a beautiful week, and again we invite you to join us each day for our daily blessing. Thank you.